Hi, I'm Dr. Arlene O'Connor, and I'm in Science Education and Instructional Technology, and I'm going to explain how I've come to use open education resources and principles I've derived, and then show you some examples. I really became aware of the need to reduce cost to students when our dean at the time, Dr. Robert Clardy, brought forward the importance of us as faculty members looking at the cost of books and that the federal government was concerned about the rising debt of students who've taken out loans. Now looking at why I got personally involved was first of all in the field particularly in the emerging technology area that I'm in. The current books by the time they're in print as a textbook really are out of date and so I would prefer to use resources that are a lot more current. In the opposite direction though I used educational psychology and instructional design tools and they were really already well established and could be gotten free so to speak and I'll show you that um, and then over time I had developed a lot of my own resources white papers videos and tools and materials so the students didn't need to get everything from a textbook now what I don't really use uh, is the online courses that have been made available and also the massive open online courses, the MOOCs. Uh, I found that information to be a little volatile and there's a lot of things coming in right now as to whether they're going to remain free. So I personally don't use them but a lot of people do. And what I wanted to do too because in both science education and in uh, technology education I want my students to have very good computers and so in my course description I make a point that they need good technology good internet but that the resources within the course they won't have a fee for I'm going to start by showing you an example from one of my courses which I just opened up this is in Moodle and as the students are directed to the readings I've embedded links that go to open education resources. However, I've used the same resources in a number of courses. So what I actually do is hyperlink over to a website that I've created. And here's just a static picture of this, where I've compiled a number of resources that can be used uh, that are freely available. And once the viewer clicks that link, they're brought to this wiki actually that's maintained out of the University of Georgia where they'll find information in this case on uh, constructivism through the perspective of Piaget and this is really well vetted um, a well vetted wiki I've checked it before I'm happy with the content if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you're going to see why I'm able to use this as an open education resource. At the bottom of the page, the university has let me know that they're making this available through Creative Commons licensing and that as long as I'm not making a financial profit from this other than my salary, it would be uh, free for my use and my students use. I brought this over here so you could see it a little bit larger. This particular wiki page has been accessed 607,000 times and it's good content but that sort of reinforces that it is good content. Uh, just a little on Creative Commons and I'll let the librarians really explain that to you but it's a way that an individual or an organization can create a license and I'm just sliding through the website a bit that allows you to share your work with others and do it in ways that you choose to make it available to the public. So I've benefited from the use of the Creative Commons license and I'll show you later too how I put it on all my materials because I want my educational materials to be open for other users. Returning to the screen capture of my website that I use to aggregate resources, you might be able to see that I also have put in a link so that somebody could download a print version. Now in this case I can do that because the Creative Commons license allowed me to create 
my own document, so to speak. I make a word processing document and I upload it to this website. That keeps me out of the situation of having to revise all my links on a regular basis because, uh, as you know, if you use web resources, uh, they may be free, they may be from the government, but the links change. So I didn't want to always be stuck, and so I had the permission to use the entire document. So I compiled the Word document, and my students can access it here. And again, I simply use the website because it allows me to have materials from multiple courses at once, um, but you could put this directly in a Moodle shell, or you could put it directly in a note that you send to students. One of the biggest challenges I've found with using open education resources the way I do, though, is that they're volatile. And I try to check my links, I try to check my websites, but things change. And so I've come into putting a note to my students that uh, I use this disclaimer in all of my courses where I point out that I'm reducing their cost by using articles that are out in the field and by using education resources from the library but that if something's changed could they please notify me so it doesn't look like I'm negligent if a link is not working uh, and it puts the burden on the students who often come back and give me an updated resource that I've found to be very helpful. This just demonstrates some of the websites that I've created over time because when you're teaching about emerging technologies you often really need to make your own materials so uh, I've aggregated these it's not hard to make websites and I'm sure your instructional designer can help you to be clear that you've done everything consistent with universal design and uh, with the Americans for Disabilities but what I've done is created a number of resources that I've made available to the public under Creative Commons, but I use them myself. And because they're in a website, I can put them, uh, I can link them to a number of courses. So I'll just show you a couple of examples here. Now, this is one of my more recent, I call aggregator sites. And you'll notice that I make it clear that this is a faculty site, it's not a SUNY site, um, not that I don't share all the materials, but I don't want to be uh, putting the imprimatur of SUNY on this because this really is something that I create for my own courses. And if you want something for SUNY or Open SUNY, you have to make sure that you've complied to all the standards. So uh, here I try to apply to the standards, but I certainly uh, don't want to put something in in a font that maybe isn't acceptable. And so I've gotten to personalize it with my own picture. Um, you can do whatever you like, but you'll see that I have a lot of materials that come in here. And I do put a Creative Commons licensing on areas. And if somebody wants to use my materials, they have my permission. And uh, I think it would depend on what you want to do, whether you want to share all of your resources. That would be your choice. I do have publications that are owned actually by the companies that have uh, published them. And I cannot put those here because those are uh, have copyrights that do not allow me to post them publicly. So you'd want to be careful that you don't post any publications if the copyright is owned by somebody else. But everything on these sites are things that I've created or that are created by other people who allow them to be shared. Another way to get wonderful resources for Empire State College students is to use our own library. If you locate a resource that you think would be useful for your class, you click over on permalink and that gives you a link up the top, a little bit hidden by the screen here, which I clicked on and I can copy and paste that directly into my course. That allows the student to access the article, uh, but it requires the SUNY Empire State College um, logon so that, you know, there is not um, a dissemination of information that has not been um, properly paid for by the college. And for my final example of ways that you can make your own OER resources, I'm going to just click website. on a video a that I made to explain some of my work. Now, the videos are easy to make today, 
and you can use them as resources for your class and you can make them available to others as well if you put a Creative Commons license on them. Whether you're looking at a business site. So I'd really like to encourage uh, faculty members, instructional designers to look for ways where they might get resources that are already in the public domain or create some and share them into the public domain so that the students at the end can have a good, rich, up-to-date experience that's diverse, that calls on a lot of resources, but does not deplete their funding. And today, my take is that we really need to have students that have powerful computers with good internet connections to get access to these resources. So thank you very much.